So today, I promise I'm not dropping the Bible today. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. And I'm Rumpelstiltskin. That's a Grimm's Brothers fairy tale from 1812. And it's the story about a little troll who spins straw into gold in exchange for a girl's firstborn child. Yes, Rumpelstiltskin. I'm sure you've heard of it. Another German fairy tale. Some of those get really dark. I took German all through high school. And um, there's one story of this person with, is it scissors? And they chop you up or something? I don't know. I just remember reading it in German and being like, oof. I think even a lot of the German stories were um, when they came to America and uh, turned into children's stories, they changed a lot of things. If you look at the original stories of a lot of the stories you know, they are they are a little bit darker. But anyway, guys, it is January 7th. Happy Friday. As you can tell, I'm still here by myself, which is fine. We're making it work, and everyone in the house is starting to test um, negative for COVID, so next week we'll be back to a normal format but until then you're stuck with me anyway happy distaff day do you know what a distaff is because i did not know until today a distaff is a tool used for holding unspun fibers distaff day held 12 days after christmas is a time when regular household chores are resumed that's much needed probably we get in this weird holiday mood where we just stop everything the world comes to a standstill with green and red lights and Christmas cheer, but at some point, we need to get back to work. Before the spin wheel was invented in 1533, people used the distaff and the spindle to spin wool fibers and flax. The distaff became securely associated with women and symbolized the maternal head of the family. Saint distaff never existed, but January 7th was an unofficial medieval celebration. Observed the day that women went back to household work after 12 days of celebrating Christmas. Men return to work on the Monday, sometimes called Plow Day, immediately following St. Distaff Day. But for more about distaffs, we're going to learn about St. Distaff from our friend who has COVID, who is somewhere in the vicinity. St. Distaff's Day, or the Morrow After Twelfth Day, by Robert Herrick. Partly work and partly play, ye must on St. Distaff's day, from the plow soon free your team, then come home and fodder them. If the maids a spinning go, burn the flax and fire the toe. Scorch their plackets, but beware that ye singe no maiden hair. Bring in pails of water then, let the maids be washed the men. Give St. Distaff all the right, then bid Christmas sport good night. And next morrow, everyone to his own vocation. Ain't that beautiful. But if there's anything to celebrate today, it's really not to celebrate at all, is it? It's get back to work. You've been been enjoying the holiday season, but there's a certain joy in enjoying the holidays and then just getting back. I know I could be celebrating Distaff Day just looking around the studio. So I'm going to get to cleaning after this, and you should too. Or... Or we can all wait till Monday. I think that's a better idea because after all, it is fun Friday. And why would we start cleaning now? Cleaning is meant to start on Monday. Procrastination. But you also... uh, And so finally with distaffs, you might know a distaff from Sleeping Beauty. It's what she pokes her finger on. But that's enough about distaffs. Still don't really know what it means, but I'm sure post-editing, I will have a clearer picture. So guys, you know what day it is. Today is a special day on Friday where we've tried a couple of different things. So before we get into our Friday fun, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible. As you know, this is a Christian podcast. So when we read the Bible, we find spiritual meaning that was put there, and it remains protected by God to comfort and instruct and guide us through life. But we can also shape our world by viewing the regular things around us as teaching tools and extract them from lessons of love. I'm going to read a little Bible verse. You can probably take a wild guess of where I got it from. Psalms. P-S-A-L-M-S. I can read it with my eyes closed. It is so good. You know I love David. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. 
So obviously it's not walk through Thursday. We're not going to walk through every minute of it, but a couple of things to take away. I think we talk about fear a lot. What does it mean to fear God? And I think the, I have it down here is sort of a, a better understanding of what it is. In this case of, of um, fearing God, it means to have a deep respect, reverence, and awe for God's power and authority. So we know God's love. We're not fearing that he's going to smite us down, but it is this awe and respect of, of like, how else can you describe it, right? Like, if you look at a child, the way they look at their father, it's you don't fear him, but you 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 bask in, in his greatness. And it's he, he is, has so much power. And so we use fear, but we don't want to misconstrue that as being afraid. And so, yeah, so God has given us a world where we can find Easter eggs and silver linings and all things. We just have to open our eyes. And with that said, we're going to get into what we have been doing for the past three Fridays, a new little segment called Dr. Seuss Fridays. And um, it's not as childish as you may think. What we do is we read a Dr. Seuss book and then we use it just like we can use anything as, as a metaphor for something more, a spiritual significance. So today, I promise I'm not dropping the Bible today. Today we're reading, I Can Read With My Eyes Shut by Dr. Seuss, featuring the cat in the hat, and then a smaller cat in the hat. It's a little longer one, so bear with me, guys. I can read in red, I can read in blue. I can read in pickle color, too. I can read in bed, and in purple and in brown. I can read in a circle, and upside down. I can read with my left eye, I can read Mississippi. I can read with my left eye. I can read with my right. I can read Mississippi with my eyes shut tight. Mississippi, Indianapolis, and Hallelujah too. I can read them with my eyes shut. That is very hard to do. But it's bad for my hat and makes my eyebrows get red hot. So reading with my eyes shut, I don't do that an awful lot. And when I keep them open, I can read with much more speed. You have to be a speedy reader because there's so, so much to read. You can read about trees and bees and knees and knees on trees and bees and threes. You can read about anchors and all about ants. You can read about ankles and crocodile pants. You can read about ho hoses and how the, to smell roses and what you should do about owls on noses. Young cat, if you keep your eyes open enough, oh, the stuff you will learn, the most wonderful stuff. You'll learn about fish bones and wish bones. You'll learn about trombones too. You'll learn about Jake the pillow snake and all about Foo Foo the snoo. You can learn about ice. You can learn about mice, mice on ice and ice on mice. You can learn about the price of ice, nice ice for sale, 10 cents a pail. You can learn about sad, and glad and mad. There are so many things you can learn about, but you'll miss the best things if you keep your eyes shut. The more that you read, the more things you'll know. The more that you'll learn, the more places you'll go. You might learn a way to earn a few dollars or how to make donuts or kangaroo collars. You can learn to read music and play a hut zut if you keep your eyes open, but not with them shut. If you read with your eyes shut, you are likely to find that the place where you're going is far, far behind. So that's why I tell you to keep your eyes wide. Keep them wide open, at least on one side. Boom. Guys, I don't know about you. I don't know if it's because this is the third week and I just start looking for bigger picture things with these Dr. Seuss books. But I think this tells us a lot and I think this is so valuable. There's a little Dr. Seuss book that you'll find in a kindergarten classroom. And I am thinking on the spot because I don't really write all this stuff down, but I think we can compare it to, I want to compare it to three different things. Hmm. What do I want to compare it to? I want to compare it to real world use. And then I want to compare it to spirituality. Maybe I should write this down. And finally, I want to talk about the Bible. So I do have some notes from my friend who's not here. And I think she talks about real world use the most. So 
the whole idea of this book is you can't read with your eyes shut and it's about perceiving information right like it's about if your eyes are closed to things you're never going to learn anything from like you're going to have a skewed perspective and what she wrote here was is talking a little bit about just politics this is just one example of many examples that you can get from what happens if you read your eye, with your eyes closed but here it's talking about colors the very first page i can read in red and i can read in blue you you see political um division characterized by colors and and it's the idea of how a, a big problem we have right now is too many people have their eyes shut to uh, learning other things and i think an important part is there's a difference of of agreeing and understanding knowledge what is that gi joe knowledge is power knowledge is power with this stuff and I, and I think it's so important to open your eyes to the ideas of those around you and, and to get different perspectives i think you learn so much more about yourself by learning about others whether you agree with it or disagree with it and you can never learn if you just shut yourself off and, and that's what we see now you see arguments with people where whether it's political or moral where there, I, I ask i'm like why is there even an argument you'll never change your mind and you'll never change your mind and nobody's willing to learn more nobody's willing to hear the other person's side actually think about it not maybe not change their mind but at least have more knowledge on the subject and so yeah so you just see so many parallels with that idea of just real world being closed off being closed off to new ideas being closed off to learning because isn't that what life's all about is learning learning new things learning new ideas learning things that you disagree with learning things that you don't agree with i even for myself i try to work on on that um with with even other religions obviously you know it's a christian podcast i'm christian and i am 25 years old in the last three years did i start learning about uh islamic theology and i was like wait what we believe in i i didn't even know the most simple fact of we believe in the same god allah is a name for abraham's god for david's god they believe in jesus they just and so i learned about that and i, I got a new perspective did i become muslim like no because where oh i learned that they have a great respect for jesus and see him as one of god's prophets but i see him as god on earth and and so it's that idea of opening your eyes to things and then understanding it more and and now i'm not walking into conversations at a point of ignorance because i read with my eyes shut you know so next i want to talk about spirituality um, before we get into like the actual nitty-grittiness of of like I'm, I'm separating spiritual and the bible spiritual i just want to talk about what we always talk about and um which is he who has ears let him hear he who has eyes let him see and it's this idea that people do people in a spiritual sense have a, sometimes will have their ears closed off and the idea is to not try to con like if you are spreading good messages if you're spreading good information the people who have ears will hear them. And as individuals, we can always try to open our ears and open our eyes to these things and not be closed off. And is that not reading with your eyes shut? It's that closed off, I know what I know, and you're not open to new ideas. And it's why, it's why I think you know, Jesus loves children so much, where it's like their innocence. Part of that is their eyes are fully open their ears are fully open. They're just perceive. They're they're just taking in all of the, the world around them. And then as we get older, we tend to close our eyes, close our ears. I know enough. I've seen enough. I have all my, I have all all of my my thoughts in order. And then it's like, well, then what's the point of of going? Like the whole point of this journey that we call life is to always be taking in things. And there shouldn't be a point where we say i have read enough you know you, you, like you, oh i have enough knowledge nobody would say that but we tend to do it in things like spirituality where it's like 
okay, I don't try to don't try to come at me for anything I believe in because I'm steadfast. And it's like, well, don't you want to learn still? No. And, and and that's the ears being closed, and the whole idea is to open them. So finally, what I think this book resonates with me the most is the Bible. You we read here, I can read with my eyes shut, and one page I want to um, talk about in particular is I can read with my left eye. I can read with my right. I can read Mississippi with my eyes shut tight. Well, here's why I think that's interesting. I can read Mississippi without looking at that. Ready? And I can even spell it. Let me turn, let me turn around so you know I'm not cheating. M I S S I S S I P P I. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. And I can do that because I know the word Mississippi. I can quote it. I can quote each letter in it. And I find we do that so much in the Bible, right? Like where it points out what he can read with his eyes shut tight. And it's like, we do that so much with the Bible where we know a verse. I know what's morally right and what's morally wrong because I can give you a quote. I can give you a quote from the Bible and and prove me wrong. And what we know, then we shut our eyes and then you don't get what comes after that of all the things that you're missing if you open your eyes. And I think that's so important, right? Like what's the, what's the next word in, in this Dr. Seuss book after Mississippi? I don't remember. I remember the Mississippi word It stuck with me, but right after it, you know, Indianapolis and hallelujah too. I can read them with my eyes shut. That's very hard to do. I didn't remember that because I didn't have it on my mind. And I think this happens with the Bible and it's how the Bible can be used in the wrong way. I would say where you know something from it, but you're not willing to get more out of it. I I said that I said, that's the reason why I read the Bible is because I was reading the Bible with my eyes shut. I, I, I knew the stories that I knew and I wasn't willing to open my eyes to the rest of it. And when I finally did, and then I finally sat down on a day-to-day basis for a year and a half and read it from cover to cover, I, I, I was the, you know, the cat in the hat, the whole end of this book of being like, well, there's this and there's this, and I would have never learned about any of this. And on top of that, you, you learn about these overarching themes that may in a weird way be contradictory to a little four word sentence in, you know, in some one of the books, it's like, you get the, a much broader idea of it. And so I think it's a very important to you know use an analogy like this of don't read with your eyes shut <laughs> in the sense of, of the Bible. Because I think that's that's a, a huge takeaway and, and just in, in, in anything, right? Like this is about learning more. It, it's not about what your views are. It's not about what your, you know, your religion is or your political beliefs are. It's about being open-minded and not walking through life, you know, with your eyes shut. I did that once when I was, I'll give you a little story. When I was, uh, I'm going to say six, five, I don't know. I was at my grandfather's house and me being an empath, I was like, let me, I want to understand what it feels like to be blind. And so while my entire kitchen, while my entire family was in the kitchen, probably making tuna fish sandwiches or something. I walk out into the big living room and I close my eyes real tight and I start walking. And as I'm walking, I'm like, you know, it's not that bad being blind. I can do this. All of a sudden I feel myself falling through the air and there was an open cabinet and it cut my face open. I still have a scar to prove it. And I had to get a bunch of stitches and that wasn't fun, but if anything, it was a metaphor, right? It was like, you know, I was, I was walking around the world blind and you know, and that's what happened. I didn't, I didn't see what was right in front of me. And if I can get anything out of, you know, the scar on my face, it's that on a metaphorical sense to keep your eyes open when navigating or keep, yeah, metaphorically keep your eyes open going through life and being open-minded and having your beliefs and as i'm I'm doing a christian podcast you think i'm not emphasizing strength in your beliefs but i am also emphasizing being 
open-minded to everything you know, reading it, reading you know knowledge is power like like i said before so go out keep those eyes open and oh i think she had one more point the very end goes like this so that's why i tell you to keep your eyes wide keep them wide open at least on one side and the closing point there is at the very least you know try to be a little open-minded and even if you don't open both eyes fully the last thing you want to be is to be fully closed off to have your ears fully closed and your eyes fully closed because then you can't learn anything and i do really think that's the purpose for why we're all here but guys that is our dr seuss friday i hope you liked it um personally this is my favorite book so far on a metaphorical stance maybe because in half the podcast we always say let those who have ears hear and this is sort of going right along those lines but anyway it's gonna be a little shorter podcast today because you know i'm by myself and uh but it's gonna be the last time starting next week the whole gang frank whatever her name will be then we'll all be here and i'll be able to be back in my hoodies won't have to dress like a youth pastor anymore even though i kind of like it what do you guys think let me know in the comments if i just start looking nicer nicer for you guys anyway go out have a good weekend go and enjoy it keep those eyes open and the holiday we're celebrating distaff go go check out some distaffs why don't you anyway that's our short little podcast for the day short little segment i would even call it not even a podcast dr seuss friday peace bye see you next week i'll be back sitting in the chair with frank <laughs>